Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 6.9, Problem Solving, Practice Addition and Subtraction. Our essential question for tonight is how can the strategy work backward, help you solve a problem with fractions that involve addition and subtraction? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 6.9. Now for number one, it says, from a board eight feet in length. So that's the starting amount, eight feet. And now he's going to cut two groups of two and one third. How much of the board remains? So we're subtracting, we're cutting from our eight feet. Now you can write an equation to kind of work this out in your mind. You can say two and one third plus two and one third plus what amount is going to be the leftover amount to equal eight holes. But to really get this amount that you don't know about, you're going to have to work backwards to get it. So you're starting with what you know. You're starting with your eight holes. When you subtract two and one third from that, you get a value. Then from that value, you can subtract another two and one third, and that'll give you what's left over. And what would be left over is three and one third feet. Now there's two strategies that you can do for this. One would be you start with your hole and you subtract what you know, one group, and then subtract the other group, and then you get your value. Now that is a way that the book showed you how to do it, but another strategy which I find easier is to get this value right here because really you're having two of your two and one third. Get that total value which would be four and two thirds and just subtract it from eight. To me that would be a lot easier. So you would have eight holes minus four and two thirds. And we knew with subtraction that you can borrow a hole and make a hole. So you have seven hole and three thirds. So now you can subtract. 3 thirds minus 2 thirds is 1 third, and, and 7 holes minus 4 holes is 3 holes. And as you can see, we have 3 and 1 third feet. To me, I find that strategy easier. All right, so for question number two, it says Lynn bought a bag of grapefruit, 1 and 5 eighths pounds of apples, and 2 and 3 sixteenths pounds of bananas. The total weight of her purchase was 7 and a half pounds. How much did her bag of grapefruit weigh? Okay, so we can work backwards to figure this out. We would have, well, first of all, the equation would be x, let's put g for grapefruit, that would be our variable, plus 1 and 5 eighths plus 2 and 3 sixteenths would equal the total of 7 and 1 half. But we can work backwards to figure it out to find the value of our grapefruit. Now you can do one way, start with 7 and a half and subtract 2 and 3 sixteenths, and then from that value that you have, you can subtract 1 and 5 eighths to get the leftover amount, which will be your grapefruit. But to me, I personally would much rather find this value and then subtract it from 7 and a half. That to me is just less work. So let's go ahead together and find 1 and 5 eighths. Go ahead and do that with me in your paper, plus 2 and 3 sixteenths. Okay, as you can see, I don't have the same denominators. But let's go ahead and make it. I'm going to go ahead and make this sixteenths. So that's going to be my common denominator. So five eighths has a value of ten sixteenths. And let's go ahead and put this back down here as three sixteenths. All right, so we have ten sixteenths plus three sixteenths is going to be thirteen sixteenths. And we have three holes. So now, together, my apples and my bananas equal three holes and 13 sixteenths. Now, when we subtract this value from our total value, that'll give us what the grapefruit equals. So let's go ahead and do seven and one half, that's the total value, minus what we've learned, which was three and 13 sixteenths, and that'll give us our grapefruit value. Now, if you wanna pause the video and work this one out on your own, you can or you can just do it along with me. I'm gonna go ahead and keep 13 sixteenths as is, and let's go ahead and make one half equals how many sixteenths? Eight sixteenths. All right, now we can subtract. Eight sixteenths minus 13 sixteenths. Now we can't do that, we have to regroup to make it work. My seven should become a six, and now we're gonna add 16 sixteenths to my eight, so that would be 24 sixteenths. All right, now we can subtract. 24 minus 13 is going to be 11 sixteenths, and we have three holes. So what's the value of the grapefruit? 
three holes and 11 sixteenths. I know that was a lot of steps, and that's why we work backwards to figure this one out, and you just take your time. Don't be overburdened by word problems. Just say, I can do this, and just take your time. It's not a race. All right, so for number three, it says Maddie's house consists of two stories and an attic. The first floor is eight and five, six feet tall. The second floor is eight and a half feet tall. And the entire house is 24 and one third feet tall. How tall is the attic? So we want to find A, the attic. And all together would be equal 24 and one third. Now, a strategy is you can start with this and subtract this amount and then get that total and subtract this amount to find your attic. But again, I like the strategy of combining what you know and then subtract it from your total to get your attic value. So let's go ahead and do eight and five six plus eight and one half. All right, now as you can see, our denominator is not the same and you should right away in your head say, I know we're gonna find it with six. So one half should equal how many six? You should be saying three six. All right, five six plus three six is eight six. And then we have eight holes plus eight holes is 16 holes. Now, as you know, this is improper. Let's go ahead and change it. So I know eight six really has the value of one hole and two six. So we're going to change this to one hole and two six. So let's add our holes together. 16 plus one is gonna be 17 and two six. All right, now we can subtract this total from 24 and one third, which is a total value of the whole house. All right, so here we go. 24 and one third minus 17 and two six. Okay, and now we can just work this one out as we normally would. Okay, I know one third and two six have different denominators. So let's go ahead and make it the value of six as my denominator. One third would equal two six, all right? So now we have 24 and two six minus 17 and two six. So two six minus two six is nothing. So really we just have zero in our fraction part. And 24 minus 17 is going to be seven feet. So we would say that the attic is only seven feet tall. Okay, let's look at question number five. Number five says, Marcy bought a 50 foot roll of packing tape. She used two eight and five six foot lengths. How much tape is left on the roll? So let's go ahead and write our equation. We have eight and five six plus eight and five six is what she's used plus whatever the tape is left I'm going to put a T here for tape, equals 50. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what our value would be. I'm going to go ahead and add these two together just to get that total, and then we can work backwards and subtract it from our 50 to find our value of our tape. Here we go. 8 and 5, 6 plus 8 and 5, 6. Go ahead and add that up. You should have... 16 and 10 six. Now we all know that 10 six is improper. It's a fraction greater than one whole, so let's go ahead and regroup that and turn it into a mixed number. So we have 10 six really becomes a value of one and four six. So we have 16 plus one is going to be 17 and four six. Now that we have this total right here to be 17 and 4, 6, we can subtract it from 50 to get the value of the tape that's left on the roll. All right, so let's start with our 50 holes minus 17 and 4, 6. Now remember, when you subtract with fractions, never just drop your 4, 6 down. You have to subtract it, okay? Because that's what we're doing, we're subtracting. If there's not a fraction to subtract from, you have to make a fraction. So let's go ahead and make... 6, 6, and we're going to turn this into 49. Now it still has a value of 50. 49 and 6, 6 still has a value of 60, but now we can subtract. 6, 6 minus 4, 6 is 2, 6, and 49 minus 17 is going to be 32 because 
9 minus 7 is 2, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So we have 32 and 2 6, better known as 32 and 1 third feet of tape that's left on that roll. Okay, go ahead and turn your page over to the back side. For number one, it says Paula spent three-eighths of her allowance on clothes and one-sixth on entertainment. What fraction of her allowance did she spend on other items? Now remember, her allowance is one whole. And go ahead and work backwards to figure out what's left over to find out what she would spend on other items. And for number two, go ahead and read through that one question carefully and work backwards to find out how much did the seeds grow during the second year. Go ahead and assess yourself at the top of the page. If you don't feel very confident on this, go ahead and just put down that you're a novice. Number two for apprentice. Three, if you're really understanding this but you're not ready to teach it yet. Or four, if you are getting this and you feel like an expert, put down four at the top, please. And we're going to practice more in class tomorrow, so if you're feeling discouraged, don't worry about it. We're going to practice some more, and we're going to feel confident by the end of the lesson tomorrow. All right, have a great night.